Welcome to another video. We've got a very wide problem. As you can see on the board, it's taken over everywhere. And it's going to take over your mind because you got to think about this problem. We have x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, x6, x7, all real numbers, and they form this chain of of quantities, okay? Starting from 1, x1 plus 4, x2. You notice that all the coefficients are perfect squares up till you get to 49, x7. And if you add everything, you get 1. If you repeat the same thing, but instead of starting from 1, you're starting from the next perfect square, which is 4, all the way to 64, x7, it's 12. You do the same thing starting from 9, you're going to get 123. You do the same thing starting from 16, you're going to get, oh, that's what they want us to find. But if you look carefully at the answers, even if you don't think about this, you can almost predict what the answer is going to be. Look, this is 1, this is 1, 2, this is 1, 2, 3, and what do you think the next one is going to be? 1, two, three, four. Yeah, I tried that, but it was not correct. Because that's not how math works, you know? Mathematics does not work by you just looking and predicting stuff that don't make sense. Because at first it made sense, but it doesn't make any sense. Then I tried something else. I looked at the first part, I said, how can I get 16 from 9, 4, and 1? Oh, I know what to do. What is 9 minus... No. What is the square root of 9? It's 3. What is the square root of 4? It's 2. So this looks like 1, 2, 3. If I take all the square roots, okay. So what is 3 plus 2? That's 5 minus 1. That's 4. What is 4 squared? 16. I tried that. It worked. I came here. I'm going to use all the square roots now. Watch. The square root of this is 2. This is 3. This is 4. So I'm going to say 4 plus 3. What is that? 7. 7 minus 2. 5. What is 5 squared? 25. I came here. It worked for all of them. So I came to a conclusion that if you take the square root of all of them, and then you add this and this together and subtract the top one. When you square it, it's going to be your answer. So this is what I said. If I take this, I take the square root, square root of 123, and then I take the square root of 12, I add it, and then I subtract the square root of 1 minus square root of 1, and then I square it. That would be my answer. Huh. You know, when I did this, I didn't think it made any sense because I could, it's not a rational number, and I was expecting this to be rational. I'm going to try and plug this into a calculator and see if it is correct. If it is not correct, then I'll have to find another way because there's another way, the right way. Let's get into the video. Okay, so it doesn't fit the profile. <laughs> so now, let's actually solve this like mathematicians. We have to just apply the algebraic rules that we've learned from ninth grade, okay? Look at systems of equation. We call this equation one, equation two, equation three. Try to do some elimination and life is gonna be good. So this is what I wanna do. It doesn't matter which one I focus on, just pay attention to the numbers, okay? Now, watch the difference between, because all of these are the same variable, okay? And the same principle applies to them all. Now, what's the gap between 49 and 64? If I subtract 49 from 64, I'm gonna get 15. If I subtract 64 from 81, I'm gonna get 
17. If I subtract 81 from 100, I'm going to get 19. So you notice that it is the gaps are 15, 17, and 19. Now you've seen some common gaps after you do the first subtraction. That is the key because the same thing, the gap from here is 3, 4 minus 1 is 3, 9 minus 4 is 5, but 16 minus 9 is 7. So the gap is 7, 5, 3. It's a common gap of 2. The same gap that we had here, 15, 17, 19. So we can form two equations, subtract one from the other, and life is beautiful. The only thing is we don't know what this number is. So just to help our calculation, we can just say, let this number be, I like K. So, watch. If I subtract equation 2, so let me call this equation 1. Okay, four equations. Let's do equation 2 minus 1. This minus this is going to give me 3x1. This minus this is going to give me plus 5x2 plus 11. If I do the same thing, this minus this, what would I get? 5x1 plus 7x2 plus x7 equals, it's going to be this number minus this, k minus 1, 23. Because I don't have a lot of space left, I'm going to do both of them together. Notice that if you add 3 to 7, you're going to get 10. If you subtract 2 of this from it, you're going to get 0. You do the same thing here. 5 plus 9 gives you 14. 2 of this is 14. So equation 5 plus 7 minus 2 times equation 6 gives you 0 everywhere you go. Everywhere you go. So we can say that um, 6 plus 7 not 6 plus 6, 5 plus 7, 5 plus 7 minus 6, minus 2, 6, minus 2 times 6. Okay, I hope this makes sense. 5 plus 7 minus 2 of this is going to be equal to 0. So everything on the left, if you do it to it, is going to end up being 0. That is, we're saying 0. This implies that 0 is equal to, we do the same thing here, this plus this minus, it's going to be 11 plus k minus 123. Right there. So we got 11 plus, so 11 plus k minus 3 minus 2 of what is in the middle, 2 times equation 6 is going to give us the answer. Okay. So this is 222, this is 11, um, this is a subtraction, this is a subtraction. So how do we get it? We can say k is equal to, if we move these here, 123 plus 222 minus 11. 123 plus 222 is going to be 345. Nice. 11 is going to be 3, 3, 4. Ah, 334. Nice. Not 1, 2, 3, 4 as I initially thought. So this is the correct answer. I know there are many ways to figure out the answer to this, but this is just fun because you could guess wrong answers and be confident you're correct even when you are not correct. <laughs> Never stop learning. 
those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.